Hey, hey, welcome everyone to this week's episode of the Amazon Files brought to you by Mommy Income. I am Kristen Ostrander. As you can see, Amy's not here because we are doing an interview today and we're so excited to have Ryan on the show today. She is a fantastic lady. We met her back in January of last year. She came to one of our Confident Wholesale Bundlers workshops. She learned how to bundle and she is a rock star and she's got some great tips to share with you. She's gonna share her journey and where she's been and where she's at now. She's doing some amazing things with bundles, but we know the struggle is real, right? And this is our month for talking about bundle struggles. We know the struggle is real, but so are the solutions and so are the success stories. So we want to bring Ryan on with us, but before we do that, making sure that if you wanna join us to learn more about bundling, learn more about Amazon, come to our Facebook group. It is the Amazon Files, um, mommyincome.com slash join us with the code word Ryan's story. And you can join us um, and ask any question you like. There's no question that's too new or too advanced. We would love to help you out there. So join the Facebook group. And of course, without further ado, Ryan, please join us to uh, welcome to Mommy Income, the Amazon Files. We're glad that you're here. We can. Hey, Ryan, it's good to see you. Hi, nice to see you, Kristen. I'm so glad that you're willing to jump on with us and talk about um, some of your bundle struggles and your journey and everything else. So first, let's just learn a little bit more about you and your family and your life. Oh, sure. Absolutely. Um, so I started selling on Amazon in July, end of July 2017. Um, really as a side hustle, just maybe a way to put a little bit extra in the bank. Um, I knew that I didn't want um, my corporate life forever. Um, at that point, my son was about nine months old, um, and it was there was a struggle there. Um, there's only so many hours in a day, and you need to sleep at some point. And it was a stretch and a pull. So it was um, to start just a little bit of a, a side fund to um, grow over the years and see what happened with it. Um, I never, in my wildest dreams, imagined that I would have taken um, the leap that I did. But um, it's been fantastic, um, and I. So, did you tell us a little bit? I want to back you up a little bit. So, walking <laughs> through a little bit of that. Okay, we'll get to that in a minute. Tell me, you have one son. How old is he now? I have one son. He's three and a half now. Um, he's a super duper handful, um, and we live out in the country in Connecticut. We that don't. Be fun. Uh, out in the country, I mean, like how far out in the country? Like I know Amy always talks about being born in like Bumble nowhere is what she calls it, like literally in the stick. I'm in the middle. I'm in the perfect place. I am in the middle of nowhere, but in 20 minutes, I can be to a Target, a Kohl's, and four different grocery stores. So I'm good. All you need. Do you have a Costco? <laughs> <All you need. laughs> Do you have a Costco? <laughs> yes. We, have a, we don't have, actually, we don't have a Costco. We have uh, BJ's, BJ's out here, but it's the same concept. Okay. I was going to say, I don't know if I could live that far from Costco. I'm like, those no, are like our go-to. Less than 25 minutes. We're good. There you go. Okay. So, um, so you talked about starting on Amazon, but you, you mentioned, you know, flew by this corporate life. So tell us a little bit about like your work and career journey so far. Like what led you up to this point that you thought, Oh my gosh, I'm going to do this Amazon thing. So I want to hear your like quit story. <laughs> sure. So I started with, um, a textile and furniture company, um, in customer service. I held about five different positions over the, um, I was there seven years almost six 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 and change I think um, and I various departments I did customer service I worked with internal processes I worked um, training internally um, I also worked with our merchandising department and I did a ton of logistics um, I also was on the presenting side of um, like the the back end side of trade shows and um, any other kind of special things that we did, special exhibits, that type of thing. Um, and I, while I loved what I did, there were certain times in the year where my schedule just had zero flexibility. Um, and being an international company, sometimes that meant um, really trying to catch people in Europe at the opposite times or people on the opposite coast. Um, and it was a struggle trying to balance life and work. Like I think many, many people struggle with. So um, I started looking around for just kind of different side hustles, different things. And I stumbled upon Amazon, um, I think on Facebook. Awesome. So, you know, so you're doing this corporate thing, you're realizing this is not what you signed up for. And, and you're just like, oh my gosh, back and forth, all these different things happening. And what, what happened when, um, 
you just that decided that that moment was that you needed to get out of this? Like what did you do? Did you start the side hustle while you were still working? And then you I did. Out? Yeah. Um, I did my side hustle actually for only about three and a half months before I decided I just couldn't take it anymore. Um, I was also commuting an hour each way. So it was, it was exhausting with a nine month old. Um, so I still wasn't sleeping through the night. I had 13, 14 hour days and it just wasn't sustainable. Um, something had to give and there wasn't a whole lot of um, so wait, I, gotta, I gotta stop you here because my mind is really trying to understand how you did that and started Amazon at the same time. <laughs> I was like, how it did was you that? Maybe not um, the wisest decision in the moment, um, but long term it worked out. I just I knew something had to change, and I knew that it wasn't gonna change without um, the hustle coming from me figuring that out. So. I started part-time doing retail arbitrage on Amazon. I would do it in the evenings or on weekends, um, or if I could sneak in, you know, if I had to be at the office a long time, I'd try to sneak in a long lunch break and head out and do that during a long lunch break. Um, but it was, it was not easy. Um, but it also showed me a lot that I could decide to do something and follow through with it. And if you know, careful and you're diligent and you're persistent, that it, it works. Um, and I, I invested money, not only in learning, but also in, you know, in inventory, which I was able to do because I still had that paycheck. Um, so it, it, it worked and it didn't, you know, there were pro, well, pros and cons. To both that's there. the thing is that I think I, the reason I asked that and brought that to light and I didn't want to like skip over it really quickly is because so many people who are interested in Amazon or interested in learning about this, that's exactly where they are. They're stuck with something that they know, like you didn't want to work 13 hour days and commute all the stuff. You had this beautiful little boy you wanted to spend time with, but you're like, but I still have to earn some money somehow or make that make up for this one way or the other. And so there is a time where people have to do this double hustle to see if it's work, work for them. But I think what you said, exactly, you made the time you did long lunch breaks and you did things on your lunch break and you did all these, all these other things. Cause you know, we're talking about the time struggle, right? And how, you know, when it comes to bundling or Amazon or anything in general, you're going to have to make time for the things that are a priority for you. And so when did you know that it was time to pursue Amazon more full time and uh, a lot less of in the quit your job even? Yeah, no, I hit, um, labor day, um, of that, that same year actually. And I just, I was ready for the switch. Um, you know, I would not have been able to do it without the support of, um, Derek. He's financially, he's been the, the stable portion of our household. Um, in addition to really not putting so much pressure on me in terms of the finances. Um, cause he knows that that's something that I will do myself. Um, but it just, it was, change or probably collapse in exhaustion, I would guess. Um, it, it didn't feel good anymore to be trying to do it all. Um, and I just, you know, you, you talk it out, you figure out how to make it work. And that's what we did. Uh, I'm so proud of you for making that choice because a lot of times, you know, especially, I mean, I'll admit it for myself is that, that even like that security of, oh my gosh, all the what ifs before you quit. And like, what if, what if this doesn't work out? What if this doesn't happen? What if I can't get my old job back if I need it or all these different things. But like you said, at some point, why do us women do this? We run to ourselves for the complete exhaustion before we decide something needs to happen. I was so guilty of that. I'm like, always hit the point of like, I am going to have a breakdown if something doesn't like stop. But I think it's just the, our message of like, okay, we have to stop doing that. So you, you were doing retail arbitrage around Labor Day. You decided quitting your job. You're going to start doing this. So talk about some of those changes and what what made you to decide to take the next, what was the next step after that now that you had a little bit more time to pursue? Um, it was really um, a finding a groove, finding a schedule. Um, I have always been a, more of a planner person, but really making sure that setting um, short-term goals. Um, you know, I'm gonna send out, you know, 200 units this week. I'm gonna make sure I get out two shipments next week or, um, however that, that looks for what the time, the time you have, um, you know, and it, it definitely was, um, 
not not a straight line. Um, business did not grow um, smoothly or consistently. There's definitely bumps in that road, but just um, the main thing was is like just keep going. You know, a few more steps. Um, you know, there are bad days. There are bad days. You know, how do you you don't work when you have uh, an 11 month old is home with a fever and is teething and is um, just plain cranky because they don't feel good. Um, and those are the days, you know, you reprice from your phone or you um, figure out what you're going to do tomorrow because you're going to have to shuffle things around about what you didn't get done today. And it's just um, being patient with yourself. And, and I think that um, is something that I learned on this journey more than anything. Guys, I think you need to really remember what Ryan is saying here. Be patient with yourself. But also what you're not hearing is that she wasn't consistent. She was consistent, even if it was, okay, what can I do? I'm repricing from my phone. I'm doing this and that. Or maybe later on when the husband comes home, you get a couple hours to go do retail arbitrage and he takes his turn. Whatever it is, those are really two really important things I want to highlight about what you said is consistency and patience. This stuff doesn't happen overnight and it's not going to be this crazy straight line. I wish I had that image of that meme that shows like the entrepreneur journey that looks like this. Sometimes it's way down here and sometimes it's up here. But if you look at the long term, okay, what, what's the overall consensus been during this time? It's been this. So I really appreciate you sharing that because if those are the things that a lot of people don't want to talk about. You know, there's Facebook groups and everyone's like, look at these great numbers. I'm like, y'all didn't see what was behind the scenes trying to get there. So that's a really important thing. Okay. So down the road a little bit, you decided, you know, what made you decide that maybe going into something besides retail arbitrage was something in your future? Well, I knew that I didn't want to do it forever. Um, it's fun. The hunt is fun, but it's a lot of hustle. And you do get to that point where um, there's only so many stores you can geographically reach within one day. Um, so I was, I, met, I was at the point where I was feeling like I either wouldn't be able to get my shipments out or I wouldn't be able to get all the shopping done. Um, and I... I knew wholesale was out there. I knew um, it was a more sustainable and more scalable business model um, just due to the nature of the fact that you're not hunting for items, you know, two, three or four of at a given location. Um, so I did a lot of reading. Um, and I think that's one thing that people can't be afraid of is consume all the information you can get. There's wonderful free information. There's nothing wrong with investing either. Um, I probably, you know, I spent a lot of late nights holding a baby and reading on my phone, um, article after article. Um, and I think that that kind of let me grow my knowledge bank without having to financially take any risks at first. Um, and then I just, I kind of picked something and I started, I called the company. I said, could I open an account? And they said, yes. And I was like, Oh, that's all it took. Like that, that was, that was easy. <laughs> okay. You guys, I am going to say this again. Did you hear that? It is not as hard as everyone makes it seem to be able to get into wholesale. And we're going to be talking about this in upcoming episodes because we really want to take that fear away from people of just picking up that phone and saying, Hey, I like your products. Can I open an account? Sure. Where do I sign? I mean, they want to sell product to people. That is their job to do that. So um, not being so scared of wholesale, but you know, paying attention you guys, because guess what? The Amazon files podcast is free every single week, whether you watch on YouTube or listen to us on the podcast, this is free info for you every single week. And there are a lot of episodes that you can go back and listen to So whether you're rocking that baby or you're taking a walk on your lunch break, or maybe you were, we have some clients that the listeners and things that they are at their work, but they don't really have to do a whole lot. Like one person was like a security guard or something. So like, I just listened and binged your podcast the whole day while I'm at work. Cause all I have to do is, you know, I'm like security or whatever. I'm like, great, you know, do what you have to do to learn, um, learn everything that you can learn in order to move forward. So you call this full wholesaler, they say yes. So now you're like, okay, now what? So what were your kind of next steps after that? Lots of research. Um, you know, it wasn't the world's most profitable account, obviously, if there weren't very many barriers to getting that account, but it was a start. Um, I started looking around at the different ways their products were sold on Amazon. Some of them were bundles. Now they weren't exclusive to any one seller, but 
there was no reason I couldn't sell them also. Um, so that kind of got me into um, making sure and learning about how you have to do the, all the prep for Amazon and, and really paying attention to how bundles are worded and, and stuff like that. Um, that, that is, um, it's part of the learning curve. Um, so I did that. Once I did that, I found another similar vendor. So I, then I had two and, and you just very slowly built up. Um, there were lots of weeks where I had more time than money. So, you know, keep consuming all that information that you can, um, finding new vendors, even though you don't have the money to open an account and send in an order right away, just kind of figuring out, trying to feel out what that next step would look like. Um, we tell these people all the time. So I, I got to go there too, as well as saying, we, we tell everyone all the time, like, like you said, that's so perfect. Even though you don't have the money to spend there, but you had time and you're like, okay, until my next disbursement comes in, I can't reorder. In the meantime, research, it's free to open an account with someone and look at their catalog and look at their price list. This is free stuff. You guys, it doesn't cost you any money to open us a wholesale account and start doing research. That's absolutely no, well, time investment of course, where this is like a time episode. So of course, that's a perfect balance of you using the most resource you had at the time, which was more time than money at some point that balances out and then you have more money than time. And those are different conversations. But in that time, you know, I can't stress that enough that you know, you're using that time so wisely to be able to research before you can even invest. So, okay, so you, you start doing some bundles and then what do you, what do you feel like, you know, it's not all sunshines and rainbows. It's like, it's not like, oh, I started a bundle and now I can make $10 million. So uh, the struggle is real, but when it comes specifically to all the tasks that you needed to get done when it came to bundling and the research and the learning and the, you know, prep and all that kind of stuff, like how did you find the time and energy for all that in your new endeavor? Um, Lots of structure, like self-imposed structure. Um, I, I keep a calendar. I mark off um, what I need to get done that day. Um, I'm not super crazy about like saying exactly when I'll do it, but I'll mark off. You know, I'll be like, okay, I need to, um, you know, communicate with Amazon for an hour today and argue with them about reimbursements. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. just put it on the list and check it off. Make sure you know, like keeping up with it so it doesn't get overwhelming or you don't fall behind your, your deadline because there's, there's a time limit with them on certain things. Um, but I've always been a big user of paper planner. Some people love their, um, their Google calendar or their outlook calendar. I, I like to physically cross things off. I find it more satisfying. <laughs> um, I'm still married to my paper calendar. I've had to be converted to both at this point. So paper calendar and Google calendar, because I'm sharing a lot of things with multiple people and teams, but yeah, still my paper calendar dictates what's happening. If it's not written on here, it doesn't exist. <laughs> yeah, no. And it's, it takes a lot of discipline and, um, and it, I think I definitely struggle with that up and down. Um, there are weeks where I'm really great at it and there are weeks where I'm not as great at it. And, the pile of laundry wins or the, you know, the messy kitchen, whatever it is. Um, Cause that is one of the challenges I think from working from home is that just that every, you never leave it. So it's always there, whether it's done or not. Um, and just really making sure that um, I'm putting down, cause I put down those things too, so they can all be addressed. So I don't have to worry about it. It's kind of like you write it down, you go, you know how it's going to get done. So, you can just let it go and just do the things that are on your list for today. Um, you know, and I think through that Amazon journey in terms of like learning all the, you know, prepping and, and, and the software and the, you know, as you grow, you add in new things. Um, that again, like making sure you're scheduling time for those things. Like when I added inventory lab, there was a learning curve. Um, shipments all of a sudden took me twice as long even though they really now they it's quite a big time saver um, once you get to know the software. So I think um, making sure that you're leaving room for yourself to grow um, and that that is an important task, probably one of the most important tasks as an entrepreneur, because if, if you're not moving and changing, you're sinking. Yeah. Um, that is so true. You know, and this is a conversation I just had with my husband recently about, we just went to Puerto Rico for 10 days and it was a great vacation and everything else, but like everyone else, well, except for me and my mom, cause she went to, and we're both, you know, same business, whatever. Um, the great thing about all of them is although they didn't get paid, 
Um, they had to take paid vacation days or just no pay and just take days off or whatever. None of them had a big pile of work to come back to. But as entrepreneurs, we might say, I was still getting paid by Amazon as things were coming in and out. And I'm really grateful for that. But also all the things that didn't get done while I was gone, it, they don't just go away for someone else to pick up the slack. You have to do them all at some point or delegate, which is of course a step we want to take. And I think that's so important to remember is that I'm resistant to this a lot and then it takes me far too long to like decide that, like you said, with inventory lab. So if you're adding a software like inventory lab, which will save you hundreds of hours once you know how to do it. It's what first you're like, I got to learn how to do this. And then it takes you twice as long, like you said, to do a shipment. But then now how's inventory lab? Like it's fantastic. Now I do my shipments and I send all the information off to my prep center and they do it for me. Yeah. Um, but if I hadn't taken the time to learn the software, I would really be struggling now because then you're at, you know, when you add in a prep center, it's another layer of communication. Um, and even though that's a service, there's still a learning curve there. Um, you know, I um, had a goal and I had someone coming in to help me prep in my house. Um, but it just wasn't enough. I was still been getting pulled away from the tasks I was trying to do while that was happening. Um, also my prep center is in the basement. It's not really my favorite thing to do to carry up and down 40 pound boxes. Um, and I'm pretty sure my UPS man was maybe at his limit. Um, <laughs> in terms of how many boxes he was, uh, bringing in my house every day. Um, <laughs> that so, is always a, a, a that's a like, crossroads, right? We got to the same place, right? We actually, I mean, some people don't know this story, but like, I don't say it often because we get like parent shaming when we talk about this sometimes like hey parent shaming is real like I have way different philosophies than a lot of people I'm a tough love kind of person I'm like a do what you gotta do you know whatever those are those stories for another time but this one was I have this office here and although y'all can't see it um, on the other side and this is in a bedroom upstairs like this just part of my office and um, the bedroom next door was previously my daughter's my other daughter's bedroom but we have a huge full finished basement um, also and so we were outgrowing the space we couldn't process enough in here and so we literally were like you know do you mind moving to a basement bedroom which our basement but our bed our rooms in the basement too so she just be right by us um, but the reality is we were basically needing the space that was right next to here we knocked out a wall and had double space because we needed a whole 12 by 12 room to process inventory and we still had a garage full of stuff and we're like yeah. something has to change here we had people coming in and out helping us we paid people and it was like we still can't do this it's either going to be some or something else and that's of course when the prep center came along and we're like we want to do bundles we're like yay but i still had resistance at first i'm like i don't know about this are they going to do it right so making those changes like you said because ups was like you're going to need a whole truck just for yourself and we're like mm-hmm like bring it can you just put our name on the side of it too you know so those things are growing pains right is that like what got you here won't get you there and so you have to start thinking about newer different solutions and of course as you were growing talking about the time management at some point you're thinking i'm supposed to do both of these things at the same time what am i supposed to do first second and third yeah i was definitely struggling um with keeping up with new ideas um and i saw that having the prep on my plate and in any way was keeping me from growing um i just couldn't um put the time that was needed into doing new bundles while still packaging the old ones again and again and again and again um so it was it was hard at first um there's definitely like a control factor you have to give up and a trust you have to give um, but I found somebody that came recommended to me through um, several different people. So, um, you know, I, the worst that happens is you try it and then you decide it doesn't work and you try something else. So I tried it. Um, and I have to be honest, there was a learning curve there, um, not just in the communication, but also um, in how I needed to structure what I was doing, um, because it does change your process because it, it's not as condensed. Um, for sure. It, yeah. it adds all kinds of stuff, right? It adds, you know, communication and it adds, you know, for those who may be disorganized people, hello, like myself. And I was used to just doing everything here and kind of de delegating everything was still under my control, like you said. Right. And when you have to move from that to actually letting go and, and submitting to someone else's process and making sure that everything, you know, it increases lead times, it increases 
increases like touch points and things like that. So making sure all those things are in a row uh, really helps to increase efficiency, but it is scary. I mean, isn't it? It is definitely scary at first, you know, and um, I, about a month and a half in, they made a mistake. I had um, to do a lot of emails, a lot of apologies, um, but they made a mistake with one of my bundles. It wasn't intentional. It was uh, somebody grabbed the wrong pieces of paperwork or not all of the pieces of paperwork. Um, and they were fantastic in terms of fixing it. You know, they, they said something to hungry for me, um, the rest of the bundle that didn't get there from Amazon. Literally, they went to the post office and they had to do the, you know, the forms and the things. Um, and they were wonderful in helping to fix it. But like, that was my worst nightmare. And it happened. Mm -hmm. And I was unhappy about all the emails and things I had to send. Yeah, you know, th those things actually, you know, it, it can be really hard to let go of things. But then once you realize that you get over, you know, that's happened to yeah. lots of things. Mistakes happen, whether they're our own or someone else's. Uh, mistakes tend, still tend to happen. I think once you get through one and you realize, okay, that don't want yeah. that to happen again, but we got through it. It's not the end the world. I mean, every business has issues. Every, even Amazon, they ship the wrong products all the time, you know, they all different things. So, you know, going back to like the management of time. So you got a prep center, which that freed you yes. up to do what we always call those money-making tasks, right? Which is the research and the making profitable purchases and things like that. So how did a prep center really help you to, to gather more time that you were losing by doing all the prep in-house? Um, I probably stopped, I probably gained at least eight hours a week, um, which is a huge amount of time if you're really diligent about using all of it. Um, I am now able to put on my schedule instead of prep, I schedule research, which is, I, I know it's a, that's what makes me the money. Um, you start there. And um, it's also allowed me to have a little more time. Um, I've built a lot better relationships with my vendors because I've been able to increase my volume with less of my time. So I'm getting more, be, to be able more conversational with them and getting a little tidbits from them, which has really helped. Um, it's um, taken a lot of pressure off of like um, everyday things. Like I don't feel like I have to get six boxes up the stairs before I can start making dinner. Um, you know, I can, I can start making dinner and bring my laptop into the kitchen if I need to. Um, so there's not, um, it's just not as much, there's less constraints because that physical part is taken off my plate. Um, it's so, and, so freeing. Is it not it is. Know that like, okay, you can send an email anytime it's convenient for you and communicate with vendors, you know, at some point, yeah, they have office hours, but if it's just email and if you're doing yeah. research, you could do that at five in the morning, five at night, in the middle of the night, well, during dinner, during nap time, whenever, but prep you kind of have this space issue too that you're like if I don't get mm -hmm. this out it's going to take over the world <laughs> and you know you can't keep you know and UPS only picks up certain times of day so it's it's kind of too bad so how many hours do you think you're working you know that you track you're working right now at now that you've got prep off of your plate um probably 30 to 36 it depends where I'm at kind of in my cycle of seasonal items um right now it's a little bit heavier but I'm getting ready for um all my summer product will hit my prep center within the next two to three weeks. So it, that will basically be everything until I get to about July, um, except for reorders. So it comes in ebbs and flows. It comes before, right? <laughs> yes. Um, and, it, and it's that a little bit of extra time that I'm getting at home um, has made a big difference. You know, there's lots of different ways to contribute to a household but not being stressed out on the weekends and yelling at everybody about how they're throwing a laundry in the wrong place mm -hmm. is so much more pleasant. <laughs> um, and you know, I get, I get to do other things. I get to spend just a little bit more time being me, not just being a mom, um, which is really fantastic. I think. If, so it, what do you um, do? I'm going to go there. Makes for a minute. you a happier person. Well, let's go there for a minute. So what do you do? That's just allows you to be you. Like, do you have some sort of hobby or some, something that you would I do, do yourself? in the summer? Um, I keep like almost a thousand square foot garden, um, which I love, but it needs everyday attending too. Um, but I can go spend 20 minutes in the morning and get that done and then come inside when it's nice and hot and work. Um, and you know, and that contributes in another way too. I grow a ton of vegetables. So I'm, you know, I'm taking something, um, putting something in our stomachs, not just 
just enjoying it too, which I, I enjoy. Do you, do you do the canning and preservation too at the end of the season? I do. Yeah. Yeah. That's all exciting. Um, my, my grandma did that for years and years and years and years. And she had 13 kids. So everybody in the family like learned how to preserve certain things and certain things canning and all this other stuff. And I'm like, I just love that. Her garden was like literally all of her front yard. Like that's just how it always was. So that's really cool that, you know, and that's great that you can work from home. You can contribute financially because that's what you want to do. And also you get to do your hobby and contribute in other ways. I mean, this is the life you guys like to be able to kind of do this. It's a work in progress, but you know, it's it's getting there. Yeah. So what are some of your favorite tools or softwares or resources that you use to help you manage your time and your business? Um, So I love inventory lab. Um, It's, it makes sharing information. um, Sometimes like prep center needs some extra things really super easy. Um, I love my paper planner. Um, I don't go anywhere without it. And um, I don't use a ton of software. Um, I do, you know, I use uh, pixels for my background removal and really nothing else is terribly exciting. I use Word and Excel and, you know, there's a lot of great functionality. You can work in either that or Google Sheets, depending on what you like. Um, but I love that it's kind of simple. I don't, you know, holler for a lot of bells and whistles. Um, that and I'm merchant so, words. I'm so glad that you well, said that because so many people are always talking, you know, there's the two sides of the camp for that. There's like minimalistic, like what can I get by with? And it doesn't have anything to do with a financial decision. It's just like, what can I do to do as much as I can the most efficiently? And I know speaking to all those people who feel like they have to have all the bells and whistles, you guys, you can run a really efficient business with just a few key things. Now, honestly, I would not live without inventory lab just because I'm even just doing taxes now. Like, I was, yeah, my, I don't think my accountant would do my taxes if I didn't yeah. have it. So, I mean, we, I do a spreadsheet of some things, but just that's like in-house like bank statements and I do all the, the bookkeeping and accounting. And so, I mean, I have an accountant that does the taxes, but I do the day-to-day and the monthly like bookkeeping. And I wouldn't live without inventory lab because it gives me things that would take me so much time to do myself. Like just the sales tax reports and the, just all the returns and ins and outs. Like inventory lab gives you this wonderful downloadable sheet with every mm-hmm. single column you need. I'm like, this is the greatest. I download these reports and send them to my accountant and go do the taxes. I don't even have to like do much with paperwork anymore. So keeping it simple is really important. For those of you guys that are listening, if you want to learn more about Inventory Lab, you can go to mommyincome.com slash inventory lab and you can learn more about that software if you don't have it. It's one of our go-tos. We have just a few that we use and, you know, Inventory Lab and Merchant Words and like basically Google Docs. And besides that, like our Google Sheets even, we don't use a whole lot of other services and bells and whistles because we don't really need to. So it really helps. So you said about 30, 36 hours a week. Tell us if you don't mind sharing like the biggest area of growth was like a specific bundle or sales, or is it more of the free time or your margins? Like what are you just most excited about as far as your success and your growth so far? Um, I'm super excited to see what this year holds because I did a lot of new bundles last year um, and being able to bring them back for a second year is like the best thing ever. Um, it's it's the icing on the cake, but you didn't have to make the cake. <laughs> exactly. um, that has uh, been really interesting for me to watch in terms of the life cycle of, of a listing because it's not something that I've seen before, um, you know, for myself. And also... Um, uh, again, building those relationships. So I had a, a set of two bundles um, that did really well. I'd launched them at the end of July last year, and I finally ran out of stock of the, the second one about two weeks ago. Um, I sold over a thousand between the two. Um, wow, a thousand units, yeah. you guys! A thousand. Don't skip over this. She just said that so casually. Oh, I just sold a thousand of these. I'm like, no, you sold a thousand of a bundle. That is awesome. That is success story right there. I mean, that's a lot of bundles to sell. It is. It is. It's a lot of bundles that I'm glad I didn't have to prep all of them. Um, <laughs> you know, and I averaged about 15 to $16 a profit a piece on that. So like finding those gold nuggets and it took a lot of research um, and it took a lot of research before that to know when I got to that research that I had the confidence to know that that, that was the golden egg. Um, and I think you get that with practice. So again, you just have to be patient and let it happen. And 
Um, practice doesn't mean that I don't make bad decisions or I don't launch a bundle that goes nowhere um, ever. It just means that I am a little bit more confident when I see that opportunity from the numbers. I always like, like I'm a football, I'm a football girl, but uh, sometimes I like my baseball references too. And that just reminds me of that. Like you don't get someone out there hitting home runs every single time, even the best home run hitters strike out or they only get a double or they get a single, you know what I mean? So looking at the whole game overall, you could be the best home run hitter of all time, but within that you still see missed shots, strikeouts, you know, just base hits, things like that. So celebrate both home runs and base hits. And even when we strike out and say, okay, that didn't work. What can we learn? So I appreciate you sharing that and being so open about that because it is true. I want, we're all about the truth here, right? We don't sugarcoat anything on the Amazon file. So if you guys want to sugarcoat, you're in the wrong place. <laughs> we want people to know this realistically, you know, you started in, in, you know, midsummer, you know, 2017. And after what, just a couple of years here, you've gotten to a place where, you know, We've made so many changes. What's something that you would just never go back to now that you're where you're at now? Commuting. <laughs> um, I do not miss getting like that, that rush to get out the door on somebody else's schedule. Um, I, you know, I, I cannot imagine the arguments that would be with my toddler right now if that was still the case. Um, it's not a big deal if I'm 10 minutes late now taking him to preschool in the morning. You know, it's nobody else is really affected by it because I could just figure out how to make up the 10 minutes elsewhere. Um, it's so commuting. I would. That is, I, I honestly, I'll be honest. I never really had to commute anywhere. The only other job that I really had outside of like starting e-commerce, which was huh, way back in 20, 2003, um, was I had a waitress job for a time. And my husband, that was really short lived because my husband and I were like ships passing in the night. I, he would get home from work and literally 30 minutes later, I would leave him with two kids and I would leave and go to this job till 11 o'clock at night. And I was like, we don't even like know each other anymore. The kids are seeing either one of us at the same time, like not both of us, like this isn't going to work. So what's going to work. And I just remember thinking that's something I I would never go back to. And the other thing I would say is doing in-house prep. <laughs> now that I have a prep <laughs> center, I don't want to do that ever again. Or well, very I, true. I like retail arbitrage. I've always liked that, but I get my fix by doing, um, but I flip stuff for eBay um, because with Amazon and anymore, um, in my opinion, and we're going to do a whole series about this too, um, very soon, actually coming up, I think starting next week, we're going to start doing talking about retail arbitrage and the kind of where is it now in 2020? Because um, there's been a lot of people suspended for things they didn't even do and they can't prove their accounts and like they're putting all their eggs in the basket and I'm talking million dollar sellers, not just little small potatoes, anything like whether you have $10 million or, you know, $10 in your Amazon account, they don't discriminate. You break a policy and they boot you. And so talking about that and if people still have that fix they need, like me, I'm still a treasure hunter reseller at heart, but I just use eBay for that or Facebook marketplace. I flick stuff on marketplace all the time, like that I got from, you know, different thrift stores or whatever else. Um, so I get my fix that way from that, but like, I would never really go back to like that retail arbitrage and every day shopping and shipping and shopping. It's like, no, this is way better. <laughs> so what's one piece of advice you would give to someone that's just starting out with bundles? Be patient. It takes time. Um, more time than I ever thought it would, but at the same point in time, it's definitely, um, totally doable. You, um, you will get better at it the more you do it. So be patient and practice. Awesome. And you know, just, just to put that back out into the world, you guys, she says it takes time. We're not talking 10 years either. You know, she started the retail arbitrage July, 2017. Right. And then, um, shortly after that, quit that full-time job, started working, did retail arbitrage and then started bundle. So you're not even that much far into bundles before you like maybe a year or so do you think it's about a really good time to kind of focus yeah on yeah I, I, a little over a year and a quarter we'll call it um and i think i'm excited to see what happens now that i feel like i at least kind of get it um I, and there's a little bit more confidence behind my decision making um and just because as you do the research and you see the numbers it's just something you naturally gain a little more confidence um, so we'll see what happens. Yeah, I think you're doing, you're doing way better than you, you're admitting. I know you are. And so I, I get that. And I just, um, what, what is something right now, like as of, you know, 2020 that you're working on and working towards 
right in this moment? Um, would really love to be able to hire a VA by the end of the year and get some of those uh, more mundane and administrative tasks off my to-do list. Well, we're going to hold your feet to the fire on that one. We really appreciate you coming on the Amazon Files and being open and honest. Again, you guys, um, Ryan is in our uh, membership site, the hub, Amazon Files hub, and you can always talk to her there. She's a wealth of information. If you are a Wholesale Bundle student and you have not joined the hub yet, that's where all the cool people hang out. <laughs> that is where you get awesome, amazing access to not only Amy and I on a daily basis, but people like Brian or Michelle or Debbie or some of these other people you've heard of here that are really sharing their, their stories and asking for help and giving help. So that's a place you want to come to mommyincome.com slash hub. And you can get into the hub there. Again, the Facebook group, uh, you need your code word, Ryan's story. And thank you so much for being a part of the show. We really appreciate you coming on. Thanks for having me.